Okay, so we're going to talk about the thorax in the next chapter. This is a CT axial, of course, with a huge mass in the left lung. Um, this patient is in a bad way. Okay, so you're going to have to be able to label just the basic anatomy. So you have your thoracic inlet up top, and you have your thoracic outlet down at the bottom, your jugular notch, manibrium. You have the body of your sternum with your xiphoid process that hangs off the tip. You have your sternal angle with your ribs and your costal cartilages attaching your ribs to your sternum. Here is a sagittal MRI, T1. We have your midbrim and your uh, sternal angle with the body. And the bottom here is your thoracic outlet. Your xiphoid process, you can see just a tip of it there. This is a great picture. I bet you guys wish you could actually get this on x-ray, right? So this is, um, I think it's C, nope, this is MRI. So this is a uh, sagittal. It's coned down real tight though. Our field of view is very small. We have minibrium up top with your sternal ankle, sternal body, and your xiphoid process down inferiorly. So here's an axial CT. Here's your minibrium clavicle. Here's your thoracic inlet and T1 and you have a rib coming off and your sternoclinoid mastoid uh sternoclinoid mastoid your sternoclavicle joint <laughs> all right so um this powerpoint has a lot to it there's a lot to the chest so memorize 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 so when we're looking at an axial ct postcon um we'll start up top with your costal cartilage and we have your aorta right here in the middle with the body of your sternum your right ventricle, your left ventricle, your left atrium. This is what it looks like right here. Um, coming around, we have your left inferior lobe and your left inferior pulmonary vein with your descending thoracic aorta. I want you to know your uh, right inferior pulmonary vein with your right inferior lobe of your lung. This is your rib. This is your right middle lung. You have to look at where we're slicing across. Here's your right atrium and then your costal cartilage. So your sternum and this is your sternal end of your rib coming around. Here's your vertebral end of your rib with your neck and your costal vertebral joint and you have your costal transverse joint. So transverse and vertebral with next to the body. So you have the head and the tubercle, the angle, the body and then your costal cartilage up top. Your siphoid process, this is the sternal end um, of your rib. You have the uh, head and neck of your rib here. Here's your angle of your rib with your vertebral body, your transverse process. So they're saying this is T12. Okay, I believe them. Here's your costal transverse joint and your costal vertebral joint with your vertebral end of your rib. So coming down, here's your trachea. This is your carina right here in the center. So this is your superior lobe of your left lung. And the hilum is where the lung and the trachea come together. So this is your hilum right here. Um, I want you to know this is your left main stem bronchus coming down to your left superior and inferior lobes of your bronchus. This is your costophrenic angle or sulcus. I don't care what you call it. Uh, your inferior border is down here, and your cardiac notch. So there's a notch cut out of the lung for the heart. Your lingula is here, and you have your cardiophrenic angle is what I call it. So you can call it angle or sulcus, either one. And you have your um, right, middle, and lower. So lower, middle, superior, bronchus. And your superior lobe of your right lung. So this is the apex up top. When we're looking at the uh, fluid cavities, so we have the pericardial cavity here, and we have your left pleural cavity and your right pleural cavity, and this is your mediastinum in here. So you have your parietal, uh, parietal pleura and your visceral pleura, and in between there is where fluid collects on patients. So this is a CT high resolution uh, chest. So this is the T-spine. This is your thoracic aorta. Here's your left lung. We see the fissures really well. So here's your left oblique fissure. Um, this is your superior lobe and your inferior lobe with your costophrenic angle with your cardiophrenic angle. And here's your right uh, inferior lobe. And you can see the fissure right there, the right oblique fissure. And here's your superior lobe. This is a um, high-res CT reformatted into sagittal plane. So we have your right 
um, oblique fissure right there. It's a good shot of it. Okay, looking at an axial CT, um, we have your ascending aorta. You have your left pulmonary trunk with your right pulmonary artery. This is your left pulmonary artery coming here. This is your left main stem bronchus, right main stem bronchus, uh, your descending aorta. So um, you can see the right oblique fissure here. Kind of the lay of the land of the lung. So you have your apex up top and you have a groove for your subclavian uh, artery. Here's an oblique fissure and you have your superior lobular bronchus, your right main stem bronchus, and you come into your right uh, principal bronchus and your groove for your esophagus is here. Um, and here's the base of your lung and there's a groove for your inferior vena cava also. And here's an oblique fissure and then you have your horizontal fissure. So um, what else do I want you to know? Oh, here's a groove for your azicus vein and then your groove for your superior vena cava. On the other side, for your left lobe, so here is your apex groove for your left subclave, groove for your brachiocephalic vein, um, and your pulmonary artery, left pulmonary veins, and uh, your left main stem bronchus. Your cardiac impression here with your cardiac notch, your lingula, your inferior border, pulmonary ligament coming down in your posterior border here. And this is your groove for your aorta coming around. Here's an MRI axial. So you have your ascending aorta with your left pulmonary um, uh, artery with your right pulmonary artery. So here's your superior vena cava and your descending aorta. So this whole section right here is your um, hilum. That's your right hilum. So this right here, this line again, is your right hilum. Um, here's your uh, ascending aorta with your left pulmonary artery. This is your pulmonary trunk right here. So your descending aorta, this is your left main stem bronchus and your right main stem bronchus is in there. Your superior vena cava, um, you're gonna see that a lot. It's gonna be a good landmark for you because it's gonna have contrast in it and it's usually typically a little brighter than everything else. So. This is real simple, so this is your left lung, this is your visceral pleura, and then you can see your parietal pleural, pleural with the pleural effusion. Whew, try to say that fast three times. Okay, so your sternum, this is your ascending aorta, with your carina, with your right, right and left main stem bronchus, this is your left pulmonary artery, and we have uh, your descending aorta, thoracic aorta. Your esophagus is here and collapsed. Here's your right inferior lobe with your right oblique fissure. You can see right there. I want you to know your right superior lobe and your right main stem bronchus with the C, your superior vena cava. It's brighter white than everything else. So that's, that's going to be your landmark. That's going to let you know that that's your superior vena cava. Okay, looking here, the main thing here is your carina with your uh, right and left main stem bronchus. So here's your superior vena cava with your ascending aorta, and this should be your pulmonary trunk. This, um, what I want you to know on here, that's about it. Okay, just to give you an idea what the radiologists have to report on, here are all the different segments of the lung, and so when they're dictating, you'll hear them refer to the different segments within the, the lung, so that's what they're talking about. Okay, so here's a sagittal, kind of give you an idea of what we're looking at here. So here's your heart, this is your aortic arch, and coming down is your thoracic aorta to your abdominal aorta. Coming up is your left common carotid with your left, um, where are they looking? Oh here, left subclavian artery. So your trachea has the rings coming down and your esophagus is usually collapsed, as we've talked about prior. So the main thing here that I want you to see is that you have your thalamus gland right here and your superior mediastinum. So when we're looking here, you have your thyroid gland. This is a venous system, okay? So this is coming down. This is your left um, brachiocephalic vein coming down right brachiocephalic to your superior vena cava into your right atrium. So this is your aortic arch, so that's artery. And um, you you have your thalamus gland right here. So when we you look at it here versus here, it gives you an idea kind of where it sits in the mediastinum. So this is an enlarged thalamus. Um, this patient clearly is having some issues with their thalamus. Um, menibrium, your thalamus 
is there, your esophagus, trachea, aortic arch, and your superior vena cava. All right, so when we're looking here, we're going to go across, okay? So here is your right brachiocephalic vein. Then we go to your brachiocephalic artery, to your internal carotid artery, um, and then your left subclavian vein. This is your esophagus here and your trachea. And then you have your... Um, what are they calling that? Oh, your left brachiocephalic vein. So coming across again, you have your right brachiocephalic vein with your right brachiocephalic artery, and then you have your um, internal carotid artery with your inferior, I'm never gonna remember that one, your left subclavian vein, sorry. So you have your esophagus and your trachea also. So looking here, the main thing about this slide that I wanted to show you is that these are enlarged lymph nodes. So they sit in the mediastinum. Here's your aorta and your superior vena cava, and here's your descending aorta. So these lymph nodes are enlarged. So it's really important that if you do a chest x-ray closer than 72 inches that you label it because it will enlarge the mediastinum and make it look like the patient has lymphoma. So that's what we're looking for. So here's the clavicle, the trachea, the esophagus looks like the person's burping so we can see it. Um, here's some right cervical adenopathy. So when we talk about adenopathy, we're talking about a disease process. So um, these, this is widened and it's enlarged. So we're looking at the heart, we're talking about the, the base and the apex is the very bottom tip, okay? So don't get that wrong on your exam. You have your semilunar valve, your aortic semilunar valve, your bicuspid valve, and your tricuspid valve. And we're looking at the heart here. This is a coronal. So um, your pulmonary arteries, here is your ascending aorta. This is your left ventricle. You can see how thick the wall is here. This is your right atrium. Remember, the heart sits in the chest funny. So here's a good sagittal view. So this is your right ventricle. Um, the main thing I wanted you to see here is your candy cane. So this is what we call candy cane, and it's the ascending aorta to the arch and down through the um, chest through the descending aorta. So within the heart, we have epicardial fat. So like I told you, we have fat on all of our organs to protect the organs. So if we look here, this is your visceral pericardium and this is your parietal pericardium, just like in the chest, and it contains fluid. So um, if there's a, a fluid collection within here, whether it's blood or fluid, it compresses the heart where the heart cannot beat and the patient dies. So um, we have the pericardium here. You can see, the, um, see that little black stripe. So this is MRI T1, and then you can see the epicardial fat. Here's your right ventricle, left ventricle. You can see how thick the muscle is there. And then here's your left atrium with your right atrium. And I wouldn't ask you to label that valve, but those, the tricuspid and the mitral are there. So here's the heart. So this is the liver. So this is the right ventricle. And then you can see the left ventricle here. And this is the myometrium, which is the muscle. And then you can see the fat within there. So coming down, you have your tricuspid valve, your intra or, um, atrial septum. And then coming down, I want you to know your bicuspid valve, your left atrium, of course, your myocardium, and um, we have the papillary muscles, which are these little hair-like muscles. You have your interventricular uh, septum, and here's your epicardium on the outside, and this is your right ventricle with your right atrium. So here we're talking about your ascending aorta with your pulmonary trunk, your left ventricle, and your left atrium, your descending aorta. And we talked about this where the superior vena cava is going to be bright. So you can see there it's bright. So your right atrium is right beside with your ascending aorta. So here's your pericardium, your epicardial fat, right ventricle, left ventricle, left atrium, right atrium. All right. So looking at the, I want to ask you to label that valve. That's just mean. So here's your right ventricle, left ventricle, left pulmonary vein. You have your descending aorta, and here's your left atrium. All righty, so left ventricle, and then you have your coronary sinus in your right atrium with your right um, ventricular wall. I'm going to stop there. We'll pick up on the next um, PowerPoint.